hello everybody. Um, well, on this video, what I want to do is go over the uh, sliding filament theory, which basically is just the sliding between the actin and the myosin strands on a sarcomere. Hence, sliding filament theory. Okay, and um, another component of it, which is called cross bridging, which is just basically the myosin heads attach into the active site of the actin and causing contraction or the shortening of the length of the sarcomere. Okay, so um, let's get started first before we get into the sliding filament theory, how, uh, let's get started with the, uh, the nervous system first how, and how it originates. Okay, so for that, I'm gonna use uh, this model first, okay? Okay, this, uh, eventually we're gonna use this model more in depth when we go over the uh, uh, nervous system. Okay, so basically you're gonna, you're gonna, if I wanna contract this biceps brachii, your brain, which is up here, is gonna say, okay, I need to contract my biceps brachii. So what it does is that it sends an electrical impulse down the spinal cord, and then eventually, let's say for the example, for the biceps brachii, it's gonna uh, be innervated by this nerve called the musculocutaneous nerve, okay? So the musculocutaneous nerve, uh, for the biceps brachii and um, in an area called the axon terminal, okay? So this is our motor neuron here, our famous uh, muscle cell uh, here. And this is our motor neuron, which is just basically the end of the nerve of, let's say the example of the musculocutaneous nerve. And the nerve impulse is gonna do its job and end here at the axon terminal, okay? So that axon terminal, what it's gonna do is that it's gonna have little vesicles within it, and then it's gonna contain a neuro, uh, neurotransmitter called uh, acetylcholine in this case. And then that neurotransmitter is gonna cross the synaptic cleft and sit on receptors of this motor end plate and then cause depolarization of this sarcolemma. And then eventually it's gonna go down the T-tubules and cause a terminal cisternas alongside of it to release the calcium for sarcomere contraction. Now the motor neuron, you can just think of it like, uh, the motor neuron is like, say motor neuron looks like an arm and then it ends at the fingertips called axon terminals. And then it kind of like, via kind of like gravity, it kind of like floats around the, uh, but stays positioned, never really touching, but it knows how to stay there. And, uh, and then causing the release of the neurotransmitters. Just look at these axon terminals being like the fingertips, releasing the neurotransmitter on the motor end plate, causing depolarization of the sarcolemma. Okay, now the sarcolemma eventually is gonna go down. Eventually the sarcolemma is gonna fold in and become T-tubules, which are these structures here, T-tubules. And then the T-tubules causes the release of calcium on either side here via the terminal cisterna and then cause this sarcomere to contract, okay? So contract, causing the myosin and actin to slide uh, between each other. Uh, that's as a result, that's the uh, sliding filament theory. Okay, so these three models we've seen before, but I'm gonna have to go a little bit more in detail using this uh, lab manual, okay? So here in this lab manual, you can see, you can see this uh, motor neuron right here. That motor neuron is a cell body. There's the axon and there's the axon terminals, okay, which are like the little digits that are gravitating around this area of the muscle cell called the motor end plate, okay? So here you see the end of the axon terminal right there, axon terminal. And the axon terminal is gonna have, which is this right here, is going to contain these synaptic vesicles which contain the neurotransmitter acetylcholine in this case. Choline is going to cross the synaptic cleft which is this space between the motor neuron and the muscle cell and then the neurotransmitter will sit on receptors, little receptors here, and then cause the sarcolemma to depolarize and then eventually send that electricity down the muscle cell. All right. Excuse me, I got a little. All right. Um, now let's go into a little bit more of the actin and the myosin and the components of each. Okay. 
So this is what a myosin looks like. It's kind of like a, it's fixed, okay? So it's kind of like your vertebral column, ribs, and sternum. It's fixed. It doesn't move. Everything kind of attaches around it. So let's look at one myosin molecule, okay? So here you have the tail of the myosin, okay? Okay, this is the tail of the myosin. Here's the, uh, the hinge, and this is the myosin head, and you can see how the myosin pivots for contraction and uh, it pivots back for relaxation. Okay, now let's look, let's look at the actin molecule up here. The actin molecule is made up of two rows of G, um, of G actin molecules. Okay, two rows of G actin molecule. Let me see if you can see a little bit better. Get on this side, I guess. Um, G, see these two rows of G actin molecules. And notice that on, uh, on every G actin molecule, there's like these little white parts here that's called the active site. And on top of the row of G actin molecules, you're gonna have this tropomyosin strand along with tropo troponin. The tropomyosin strand along with troponin is called a tropomyosin complex. So when that calcium comes down, okay, and the calcium is gonna cause this troponin, tropomyosin complex to move out of the way, and in every eight of these G-actin molecules, you're gonna have an active site in which this myosin head right here attaches to the active site, causing uh, the contraction of the sarcomere. <clears throat> and then the sarcomere eventually uh, will contract. And let me show you what a sarcomere looks like when it's contracted versus relaxed, okay? So here you have a sarcomere which is contracted, see the arrows coming in, it's contracted. Look at the H band, it's very narrow, very narrow H band. And then up here, you're gonna see that sarcomere that's relaxed and look at the H band, it's much wider, okay? So those are the two different sarcomeres under relaxation and contraction. Okay. All right, um, so that's basically it on this, uh, um, the sliding filament theory. Um, so basically there's four parts that are really important. First of all, electricity is gonna come down the brain to the spinal cord. The electricity is gonna go to the spinal nerves and let's say to the biceps brachii via the musculocutaneous nerve. So that's electricity. Then that electricity is gonna reach the axon terminal, which is gonna have neurotransmitters that will be released crossing the synaptic cleft and sitting on the motor end plate. That's the chemical part. Once the electricity reaches, I mean, once the neurotransmitter sits on receptors of the motor end plate, then that's going to cause depolarization of the membrane of the sarcolemma, and it's going to con conduct electricity. So that's the electrical part. The electricity is going to go down the sarcolemma, down the T-tubules, which the T-tubules is sarcolemma, down the T-tubules, and then that's going to cause release of the calcium on either side via the terminal cisterna. The calcium comes down to the troponin tropomyosin complex and moves out of the way and exposes the active site where you have cross bridging of the myosin head onto the active site. Then the myosin head pivots, contracts the sarcomere, shortens the length of the sarcomere, and then via ATP, the myosin head to the active site occurs, and then relaxation of the sarcomere happens. So basically the ATP, what it does, it's strong, it's, the ATP is so powerful that it causes detachment of the myosin head to the active site, relaxation of the sarcomere, contraction of the sarcomere up to the point where it needs to detach. And, uh, and when ATP is being used upon detachment, it becomes ADP and phosphate. So um, basically when you see like a human when they pass away or a dead animal on the side of the road, they're very stiff. And what's happening is that the, the myosin head is still attached to the active site causing the contraction. There's no ATP to cause that de detachment. That's why the muscles are rigid and strong and contracted, okay? Because there's no ATP to cause a detachment. All right, so basically the four parts, electricity, electricity going down the spinal cord, chemical, release of the neurotransmitter, electricity, going down the sarcolemma, and then chemical via the calcium, uh, via the terminal cisterna is releasing the calcium. So electricity, chemical, electricity, chemical. Just remember those four components and that will help you understand how, how uh, we can voluntarily control a skeletal muscle. 
Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you understand a little bit more about the physiology of the muscle cell. Goodbye. Till the next one.